So in this video, I'm going to be talking a bit about circuit properties, so looking at potential difference, current, resistance, that type of thing. And we're going to look at the IV characteristics of different components that you will come across in the A-level physics course. Okay, so first of all, potential difference. Now, a lot of people get this confused with voltage, but they're two different things, and I'll explain in a little bit of detail why. Anyway, so first of all, what is potential difference? So before we look at difference, potential is the amount of energy stored in each unit of charge in the circuit, and it's measured in volts. So each charge carrier in an electronic circuit has a certain amount of energy associated with it, and that's determined by what the power source that you're using. And so you can calculate this amount of energy, or the potential, uh, using this equation here. So you've got your potential is the energy per coulomb. So, what is a coulomb, as you might not have come across this before? So as we know, the charge carrying a circuit is an electron. That's what is essentially allowing you to transfer energy from one point A to point B. However, the amount of energy stored in an electron is really small. So we work in bigger units of charge called coulombs. And a coulomb is actually 6.241 times 10 to the 18 electrons. So it's a lot of electrons. So it can carry a reasonable amount of energy, which is a more useful quantity to look at. So that's potential. So what's potential difference? Essentially, what you're looking at is the amount of energy that a device has taken from each charge that passed through it. So if you measure the potential at the start, they'll have a certain amount of energy, and you measure the potential after the component, and it's the difference between those which tells you how much energy the device has used. So that's what potential difference is. Okay, so let's have a look at an example with this. So we've got a light bulb in a circuit, and there's a potential difference of 2 volts across that light bulb. So essentially what we're looking at here if you think of it in circuit diagram type, if we've got a light bulb, what we've got is a voltmeter measuring across the light bulb, and that's measuring 2 volts. We want to know the number of electrons transferring their energy to the bulb in each second if the bulb uses 4 joules of energy per second. So let's think about the equations which are relevant here. So this is the form you'll usually see this equation in it. So before we looked at a volt was one joule per coulomb. So what we've done is we've moved the charge across to this side. Um, but we want to know the number of charges. So we want the Q by itself. So we've got it in this form here. So we've got four joules per second divided by the potential difference there. So we know there's going to be 2.0 coulombs per second. So remember, we've got this energy per second on the top line, so we need to remember to keep the seconds as a unit. And we know that 1 coulomb is the 6.241 times 10 to the 18 electrons. So, therefore, there are 2.0 times 6.241, which is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the 19 electrons per second. Noticing here that we've got this number here to two significant figures, because this number here was to two significant figures. So that's a very simple calculation you can do and how you might use it. Okay, so let's move. First of all, there's a nice typed out solution if you couldn't read my handwriting at any point. Okay, so then let's look at current. Now you should have already come across this at GCSE, but just to give a quick background. So, in a circuit, what your battery is doing is it's essentially... It's allowing the charges to carry energy from one point from the power source to whatever devices you connect to your circuit. And this flow of charges around your circuit is called the current. 
So, the unit of current is an amp, and one amp is one coulomb of charge per second. So it's the, it's the number of charges divided by the time that those charges float. But you'll usually see this in a rearranged form, so Q equals IT. Generally, when you're doing equations, you don't want to see divides in there, so they're always rearranged, so they end up showing multiplying there. So that's your current. So let's have a look at how this is being used. So we've got a light bulb, which is being given a current of 1.0 amps. And it's being given that current for 5 seconds. So we've, we've, got, a, we've got current, we've got time, so that would allow us to calculate charge. Well, what this wants us to do is calculate the energy if the potential difference is 4.0 volts. So remember, what we're trying to get to is we want to calculate the energy we're looking at this equation here equals QV. But currently, we don't know what Q is, so we need a way of finding that. And we know that Q is your current times time, which is 1.0 times 5.0, which is 5.0 coulombs. OK, so now we have Q and we have V in the question. So that means we've got what we need to calculate energy. So we've got 5.0 times 54.0 gives you 20 joules. Noticing again, these two numbers here were both two sig figs. That's why your answer is given to two significant figures. OK, let's move on to look at resistance. But before we do, a nice typed out version of that. If you can't read my handwriting, there it is. Pause it if you want to have a look. Okay, so then resistance. Now you'll have come across this a bit when you're looking at GCE stuff, but let's dig into it in a little bit more detail. Okay, so when you connect a component to a power source, that component will allow a certain amount of charge to pass through it every second. And the two factors generally which determine how great that current is or how fast essentially you can get charges around your circuit and those two things are the potential difference applied across the component. So generally speaking, the higher the potential difference you apply across it, the higher the current's going to be going through it. And the other thing that limits it is the number of charge carriers in the component. So the number of free electrons in the material. So if there's more of those available, generally speaking, the higher the current will be. So... If you have a material, a metal material, say copper is quite a common conductor, it has a fixed number of free electrons. So essentially you can't change that part of its resistance. So in a sense it has a fixed resistance if it's at a fixed temperature. However, there are devices around called semiconductors where you can actually change the number of free electrons. But I'll talk to you a bit more detail about those in a later video. Um, but the key difference between a conductor and an insulator is this, that there are a lot more free electrons, or in insulators there are no free electrons. And that's why they can't complete a circuit, and that's why they don't conduct. So if you don't conduct, you're said to have a high resistance. So however much potential difference you apply across it, you'll get a very small current flowing through the component. And as I said before, materials tend to have a very fixed resistance because they've got a fixed number of charge carriers. So if you have two copper wires which have the same dimensions, they should have exactly the same resistance as long as they're at the same temperature. And again, I'll talk about the impact of temperature in a later video. Okay. So let's have a look at some different types of conductors and we'll see how resistance applies to that. So here we've got an ohmic conductor. And this is because this conductor obeys Ohm's law. And Ohm's law says that the potential difference across a component is directly proportional to the current through a component. So to be directly proportional, what we're looking for is a straight line graph, which this one is, and then it goes through 0, 0. Those are the two criteria to be directly proportional. If we have both of those, we know it's directly proportional, so we know it's an ohmic conductor. So let's have a look. So this is the equation that follows on from Ohm's law. So if we look here, we've got a graph of I against V. 
So if we calculated the gradient of this graph, it would be the change in the current divided by the change in the potential difference. So let's rearrange this equation into that form. So you've got the current on the top line, which is your y, and then your v on the bottom line, which is your x. So this is an expression for the gradient of a graph. So the gradient of the graph is equal to 1 over the resistance of the component. So if we look here, we've got a straight line graph, which means the gradient is constant, which must mean the resistance is constant. So if this term is constant, this one here must also be constant. And that's a property of an ohmic conductor. So things like fixed resistors you use in your circuits, wires that you're using in your connections, they'll all be ohmic conductor type components. Okay. Then we've got light bulbs, or fi specifically filament type light bulbs. So when they get hot, they actually increase in resistance. So let's have a look at explaining that in terms of this graph. So all you do is you divide it into two distinct sections. So if we look at the central section, you can see here that this is pretty much a straight line graph. Now, if you remember, it's a straight line graph, means it's constant gradient. That, if the constant gradient, that means your resistance is constant in that graph. But if we look here, your gradient is decreasing. So if we remember from the previous slide, your gradient is equal to 1 over the resistance. So that means, if we look here, the gradient is getting less and less steep, so the gradient's getting to a smaller number. So your gradient is going down. So in order to make this number smaller, if we look at this, that must mean the resistance is increasing. So this is being divided by a bigger and bigger number, which causes this one to go down. So in this section here, we can see that the resistance is increasing, and it's the same here, the resistance is increasing. And that's due to the increase in temperature but I'll go into that in a little bit more detail in a later video looking at exactly how the temperature impacts the resistance. But that's not what we're looking at in this one. So that's a filament bulb. And the last one we need to look at is a funny little device called a diode. And the idea of diodes is that they only allow current to go in one direction. So we're not talking about the band here, we're just talking about the direction of current around your circuit. Okay, so let's divide this up into some key areas. So let's take a chop through there and let's take a chop through there. And I'll label these. So the, oh, this is region A, this is region B, this is region C. First thing first, in the AS course, forget about region C. This is called the breakdown zone or region. So when your diode actually breaks down and starts conducting in the reverse direction. Don't worry about that. If you want to research that further, it's an interesting thing to look at, and it does link to other parts of the A-level course, but it's just not what we're going to be looking at for this particular topic. So in region A, we can see here that the gradient of this graph is extremely steep, near enough infinite here. So, so in section A, the gradient is approaching infinity. So if we remember the 1 over r is equal to the gradient, so as m, which is often called, we use for the gradient, so as m approaches infinity, that means that the resistance is going to be approaching zero. So we've got nearly zero resistance in what's called the forward direction of the diode, so when it's in the direction of the current. Okay, so let's draw a line under that. Now in this section here, so we're looking at B, you can see the gradient is zero in here because it's just going along your x-axis. So if your gradient is in this time approaching zero, that must mean your resistance is approaching infinite. And if you've got an infinite resistance, it doesn't matter how big your potential difference is, you're not going to get any current. And this is called the reverse direction, or when the diode is pointing against the current, it doesn't let 
any current flow through it until we get to this dodgy zone here, to zone C. But read about that more if you like.